you know, that is wrong to do. God will tell you, you can't do it. Lay. I'll give it to you later. You can't do it. Don't try to fill it with your own faith. And when you do it, you're going to become a heretic, or you're going to come to a false conclusion that we can have in our faith. If God tells you no, then it's no. He says, wait, it's no. He's not always going to answer your question why, because you're not ready, ready to handle the answer. Like I said in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 12, it says, But you may have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are very good. So I don't think it's time you have to be teachers. You have a need that one teach you again to see the first principles of the earth with the God. And become a such as that need of milk and not question and answer the God is that you do. That was thought of me. Okay? But the only one that uses milk is on step on the word of righteousness. So he is a baby. The son me belongs to them at a full age. Even though he by reason of you have the senses exercised to the son both good and evil. Strong me is required to some people that have you exercised, experience. Okay? That's why a pastor says to not be a novice. He has to have some experience. A uh, very few new converts are ready to be a pastor. Uh, it takes a while. And, uh, and the, the work of the church can make one ready before he gives them everything in the world. I don't ever wonder why, as some of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years Christian, you read the Bible and say, I never saw that. I just jumped out of it. I just read this now, telling it to you. I guess this now, you're ready to eat it. What I saw in me came left and right out of the Word of God when I read it. And I sit there and every time I read the Bible, it's like reading it new again. Because I see so much new things. But I read it through time and time and time again. I mean, was I really that dirty when I read it? I mean, and then you remember some God. But it's like the right word opens your eyes, opens your eyes. And you know what I do? He's waiting for you ready to have it. He's waiting for you ready to The question why sometimes will come up, but more than it says, wait, you're not ready to have it. I'm so, number two, sometimes God gives the answer to the question of why. But we don't like the answer to the number seven. He gives the answer, the reason why. So we don't really accept it, and we think that he gave the answer. Somewhere in the book right now is uh, called uh, Victory in the Valley. In the Valley. That's by a guy named Charles, Charles Allen. He's a Methodist minister in Houston, Texas. I don't know if he's still working for him or late 70s, early 80s, as far as I can tell. And uh, it's not, I'm not recommending the book. I'm getting a lot out of it. There's some good stuff and then there's bad stuff in it. Kind of like you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones, and don't touch the rock. You know, type, type book. But, but, but there is an there is interesting book to me, and I have gleaned a lot of good stuff out of it. But now he, I, mean, I just saw it, picked up this book yesterday in my office, yesterday morning. Finished me, so I got up early, read my Bible, and I looked out, I was like, either I can go to ice station or I can build a fire and read a book next to the fire. The first one. 
the front as well. Too far back. Yeah. This is the first time. That's the brother's there. And this is the first time to do this. I have to man. This is the Lord God of Israel. I have not seen him as an angel, and I deliver the eye of that hand of fire. And it may be that my master's house and my master's wife went to my grave. I mean, it may be the house of Israel or Judah. And if that had not been too many, I would have known that I was good enough to be such and such free. Therefore, I must have despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. But I have still been able to be tight with the Spirit. And he has taken his wife to be that wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword of the men of the pit out my house. This is God! Because of what you did to your wife. Because God has despised me and has taken the wife of your wife and has said, Be thy wife. Because I have to live in the house and the that evil against you are thine own house. And I will take thy life before thine eyes, as one as sin possible. And I will give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wife in the sight of his son. For what I will see for thee, but I will do this thing before the others and before the son. And then as he continues saying he's going to take him away to die with God, and he will say for David has four children died. I already told you why. I already told you. You reap what you sow, and you reap in abundance. Be not deceived. God is not mine. What the old man sows, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to do the same thing. Any time a tragedy happens in your life, you ask the Lord God. And you will say, Before I live, you say, Yes, that's fantastic. Not this one. Now, here's how. You know what the devil will do? Just a black man to see what he says of you. Point to the city. You know, through tragedy, God always deals with the truth. But the tragedy is not always the truth. God's great friends make the mistake that his tragedy is the truth. I know the question, and that comes up. You have a sin topic in your mind during the time of time. Ask yourself this question. Does the punishment matter to you? Does the punishment matter to you? If you answer no, the punishment does not match the time. Then you cannot be a punishment to that sin. Now, are you still in the field of the sin? God says the part of Why do I say? Because God is God. God is God. I, I know when Rebecca died, I sat down and started to think of all the things I wish I'd done, all the things I haven't done, all the things I wish I'd done. And then I had to ask myself, is this somehow my fault? This is a medical test. And I was okay. I started going through everything that did wrong to me to stay in town. And God knew this because he had to do it. He had to do it. Now, that doesn't mean God didn't deal with me to do my thing. That doesn't mean God didn't deal with me. But that didn't happen because of me. You understand what I'm saying? So when tragedy happens, you ask, does the punishment matter to the top? Does the punishment matter? Sometimes God will show you the why, and it will be a punishment. Now, number two. Often, patients have been told that illness is never God's plan or purpose. And then this is the work of Satan. Is that true? No, that's not true. Now, how about the blind? 
why is this man born blind? Because of his sin or his parents? No. Just so I could get more. Alright, so it's false. It's false. Okay? But I'm going to pay some of the stuff, but it's not false. Keep believing and keep praying. And when your faith becomes strong enough, then I'm going to use this to go over from the evil church. Is God going to answer all your prayers if your faith is strong enough? No, there's a difference between the prayer of faith and trusting God. Uh, I'm going to cover it. That's the prayer of knowledge, meaning. And it's a false It's false. Satan is given the power of God to serve the results of sin. And then we should always obey God as long as there is sin. We will be required to see the results. Okay? That's what we think that will happen to you, Francis. Yes, death is a result of sin. Step into the result of sin. Step into the result of sin. Yes, death is a result of sin. Step into the result of sin. It is the way to the sick. But every one of us are required to go through death, tragedy, sorrow, and pain. Why? Because we live in a sinful world. And we must see the results of sin. You understand? Uh, it's like this. The goodness of God leads us as to repent. This is the goodness of God that leads us to repent. I've seen the pain from the results of sin. Alright, so here you are, you're somebody, and you got a conscious martial arts, okay? And you got to say, you know what? I am too strong, and I want to sell quickly. Forget that punch of that. I'm going to go that brick wall. I'm going to practice on the brick wall. <laughs> Blood goes everywhere, you bust all your knuckles and stuff. You say, Well, I'm doing it again. Well, there's no hope for you. You say, You know what? Maybe a punching bag is a better idea than something. You know, uh, 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 that hope. You know, you know what that pain? That pain teaches you a little bit of wisdom. Pain is actually a good thing. Sometimes it's faith in pain, going farther into the ground. Pain widens you up. You know, you know one of the terrible things about diabetes is because they lose the feeling in their feet, and they will step on nails and stuff and get gain wings, and sometimes that's the death of because they can't feel pain. Feeling pain is sometimes a safety to prevent you from going farther into the dance. Well, what about emotional pain? Don't you think God can do that to keep you from going farther? Hey, Bonnie, that sin ain't helping you. You, you need to back off. That sin has a result as sin. You see what I'm saying? So God does do real Sometimes the question is why? Why am I in this thing? Well, to teach you not to do that. Well, I got five years in jail because I did this. Well, I don't have to get caught. Nobody else gets caught. Well, the real question is why didn't they get caught? Not why did you do it, Paul? You had to tell me for something you did. To teach me, don't do it again. You see that? That's not, that's what it's for. He doesn't do the answer to why, he just don't make it. It's because of your sin. Okay? Number three. I know people are scared that they were selected by God to serve in Christ's suffering. James chapter 1, verse 4, 2 and 4. The Lord uses suffering to teach his patience. Amen? Okay. So the reward will still be further rewarded. Philippians 3, 10. 
and tells us the fellowship of his suffering. With that suffering that allows us to draw closer to Christ. He uses them as examples to increase the faith of other people. Do you see that? Your faith helps other people grow in faith when you handle it right and you suffer. You are given stuff by God to have a faith. So, yes, God uses it. The idea is that some people have the privilege of being mortal. Revelation 14, 3. We have to obey the body of the world. But you can't receive a crown of life. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. We look at it as a dream with all three of them. Well, why did they even make the dream? Well, because it didn't line up with his way of thinking. That also doesn't think to themselves and go, they don't have help to be fed. They think they are going to be wet. He's a United Methodist. Come on. He is not I mean, he's not the good at something. Don't get me wrong. I'm getting wrong. Uh, he's not right on heaven. He's not right on Okay. Uh, he's not right on heaven. So it's very kind of common. The answer uh, that comes from God. Is given that God gives it, but we don't accept number three. Sometimes the answer is, and this is the final one, sometimes the answer is only going to be given after we receive a glorified truth. We're not going to get the answer to be done. It's not going to be You do not always get the answer. And there's a reason for that. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, what kind of first time was spared again the kingdom of King Israel? And he said to them, And there is not for you to know the time of the season, which the Father has put in his own time. You do not get the answers to all of our questions. You're not going to get any of the answers. not going to give them to you. And uh, some things only the Lord knows the reason for why, and He's not going to give it to you in this lifetime. He's just not. And that's hard for us to accept. Why are they? Why are they? Because it's just what I said and just, just do what you said. That's just the way it is. I'm not explaining how many times did you go to church? I don't understand what's going on. You don't quit asking why. And God's doing that as well. He does it for us. Silence of God is one of the hardest things for us as Christians to accept in time of time. The day before the moment passed, I was sick in my room to give him a pain. And it hit me for the time. And I wrote this article, The Silence of God. It was like a new, what I might find, and now I might come even to a seat. Good, 23, 18, 6. I wrote this in my eyes before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the Lord if He would answer me and understand what He would say unto me. Would He pray against me with those great powers? No. But He would pray to me. One of the most difficult things in the Christian walk is not the fiery fire of one's in front of you. Or the death of life. Or a burden and immense fear of a loved one to be out there to do anything to stop. But the fact that in times like these, you plead and beg for God's help, you will stop. The devil will strike at the person's most vulnerable time. No matter how much you know your Bible, or are comforted by the blessing, or plead and beg, then when when one endures the silence of God, one is under the devil. And a good spirit needs to understand 
when his enemies had the high ground. It's been the third time that one fleet that has thought out quick that no one on this earth has to be a person. The simple question we not understood has caused many a Christian to come across and walk away from God in bitterness. It's a question that is answered with clear silence most of the time. And it has no interest on this side. Here's that. Here's that. Why? What? What? You know what it's like? Here's the pen. With the gym at the The child's food. He has a bag. He gives the food to him. And that can't be tell this old man to do this. You know what the man is very close to? Yeah, it's funny. Well, I took a calculated judgment call. If I do it this way, I'm only going to do the kids' food. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I need you to do this, but you need to do it. Yeah, but the one thing you ask me to do is just be careful. I know, but it's going to save you time. Yeah, but it's going to save you time. Yeah, but it's going to that's why the captain gets the order and the soldiers can see the major bomb. You might be one of the people. And the captain knows he's going to die. It's in the fight, but it's not in the face. We never know the answer to why the Lord will receive the massive plan. And it is a hope. That's what we want. But if we don't know, if we don't know the answer to why, we will seem to our lives. If we saw the future tragedy in our lives, we'd be too afraid to live it. And we say, Lord, I think I'll take a different path. That, that's not the route I'm going to take. That's why I will do it. Like every head bowed and three eyes closed. There's three answers to why. One is to don't need to know it yet. Two is I've already told that you want to say. Three is you can stop to know. I know you're going to ask a question. You're over five years of three years. Have you ever asked a question why? My God answers your silence. That is the hardest part that my opinion of the Christian. It's the hardest part. And God is your silence about it. You know what you have to do? You have to stand, step back and have your chance to very slowly in your life and put the foot. We are on this planet, all by Sometimes, you just get on this planet. You're going to ask questions, but will you receive the answers that you do? And it's a silence. It's a silence. It's a silence. 